You may have this conversation with your mind several times before it acknowledges that you are in charge and that you really mean what you say. Imagine that your thoughts are like drops of water. One thought or one drop of water does not mean very much. As you continue to repeat the same thoughts over and over, you first notice a stain on the carpet, then there's a little puddle, then a pond, and as these thoughts continue, they can become a lake and finally an ocean. What kind of ocean are you creating? One that is polluted and toxic and unfit to swim in? Or one that is crystal clear and blue and invites you to enjoy its refreshing waters? All of us have these bags of manure that we carry around with us called our past. And the people who have done things to us and the events and the circumstances, all of this stuff that we use and we bond to, and we bond ourselves to these wounds of our past and we identify ourselves on the basis of these wounds. And every once in a while we set it down and we reach in there and we smear it all over ourselves. And then we wonder, why does my life smell so bad? I don't understand this. Whatever you pay attention to will naturally grow, at least for you. Every human being that you meet, there's a good side to them, there is a nasty side to them. If you pay attention to the nasty side, your mind will be preoccupied with the nastiness. Somebody else's nastiness will become yours. And because of that, you will receive more and more of that from all around. If you pay attention to the best, <laughs> even though in some people it may be a minuscule, if you pay attention to the best, it will grow. At least in your mind, in your experience it will grow. There is a good chance it will grow in them also. You're never going to get enough. You already are everything. You're everything that you need. Think of it for just a moment. Everything that you need to have total bliss, perfection of your life, you already are. You already have it. You came into this world with nothing. That's how you're going out. And the time that you have here, it, what you have is your uniqueness, your specialness, and you don't need anything else. Now think on this. If you don't know how to appreciate what you have and where you are in your life, you don't need anything else. Because if you do get something else, you won't know how to appreciate that either. You'll just want more or you'll want it to be different, or you'll want it to be the way it used to be, or you'll want someone else to be the way you think they should be. If we are willing to turn our lives over to this greater power within us, the power that loves and sustains us, we can create more loving and prosperous lives. I believe that our minds are always connected to the one infinite mind. And therefore, all knowledge and wisdom is available to us at any time. Nobody changes until they change their energy. When you change your energy, you change your life. See, it has nothing to do with the external activity that you're doing. It's got something to do with the internal systems as to how they're functioning. Essentially, it means either neither your body, nor your mind, nor your chemistry, nor your emotions, nor your energy are taking instructions from you. They're doing their own thing. Once your machine is not in your control, being peaceful is impossible. I'll tell you, you get into your car and now you go there and you want to turn this way. You do this to the steering, it goes this way. Can you peacefully drive this car? Can you? No, anxiety is natural, isn't it? This is what has happened to your vehicle. It's out of control. You've never done anything to find out where the steering wheel is, first of all. This is not that simple as a car, this is a super, super computer. Now the problem is most people have not even bothered to find the keyboard. They think if they do this, somehow it'll work. If you make... When you're given such a highly sophisticated machine, if you do not conduct it properly, it will cause many problems to you. 
by accident it's working. I want you to know this, this is made this way. If you hold your hands like this, it'll breathe one way. If you just turn it around, the very way you breathe, the breathing pattern itself changes in your lungs. You can try it if you want when you have the time. This way, this way. I'm saying everything that you do, fundamental changes are happening in this machine because it's such a sophisticated machine. It's more than a touch screen, if you just wish it, it will happen. When you have such a sensitive and sophisticated machine and you are operating like a blacksmith, then being peaceful seems to be difficult. Peace is not the highest goal in your life, it is the most fundamental requirement. Don't ever set peace as the highest goal. If you do that, you will only rest in peace. You must see, to be peaceful is the first thing in your life, isn't it? If you want to do anything sensibly in your life, if you want to do… conduct any situation in your life sensibly, to be peaceful and happy is fundamental. All improvement in your life begins with an improvement in your mental pictures. We know that because of the law of correspondence, that your outer world tends to be a mirror of your inner world. This means that what you see on your outside, what you see in your relationships, your health, your work, your customers and so on, tends to be a result of the pictures you have inside. We also know that your self-image controls your performance. Because the way you see yourself and think about yourself inside determines how you act on a day-to-day -day basis. If you see yourself and think about yourself as an extraordinary person, if you see yourself as a success, if you see yourself as happy, positive, confident, in control, if you see yourself as a loving parent or spouse, you will act that way toward others. So therefore, all improvement in your life begins with an improvement in your mental pictures, with you consciously and deliberately selecting the pictures that you're going to allow your mind to dwell upon. And that word dwell is terribly important. When you dwell upon a picture, your subconscious mind, just as with affirmations, accepts the picture as a command and goes to work to bring that picture into your reality. It's the most phenomenal thing. Your subconscious mind controls your reticular activating system or your reticular cortex as well. The reticular activating system is very interesting. It's a small part of your brain. It's like a, a switchboard in your brain that controls all incoming impulses. Uh, let me give you an example. If you begin to tell your brain that you intend to be a great success in your field, that you are going to move to the top, that you're going to uh, be one of the most esteemed people in what you do, if you're going to make a lot of money, whatever it happens to be, this is, is accepted as a command. The reticular cortex switches on all these switches, and from then on, you begin to see all kinds of possibilities that help you move toward achieving that goal. Why is it that successful people move so rapidly toward achieving their goals? It's very simple. It's because they're thinking all the time, and as a result of thinking about what they want, they see all kinds of opportunities around them to achieve it. The average person doesn't even see, because the average person is so worried about how little money they have, and how much their bills are, all the problems are, and the more they think about those things, the more they get them. Men and women with clear values, who are living their lives consistent with their highest aspirations, are those who have a deep sense of self-confidence and well-being. We also said that the most important value you can have is the value of integrity. Integrity is the value that guarantees all the others. Having integrity means that you will not compromise on what you believe to be right in any area. Integrity is absolutely essential if you want to capitalize on your strength. It means more than anything looking at yourself honestly and making your decisions based on the fact that you are an extraordinary human being. Your feelings are very valuable clues to your choices and behavior. Your peace of mind and personal satisfaction is perhaps the most accurate guide you will ever have to doing what is right for you. To follow your heart, you don't necessarily need to make dramatic changes in your life or in your relationships. What you do need to do is to see yourself honestly as you really are and have the courage to channel your energies and focus your strengths into your areas of greatest potential. When you do this, you will soon realize that you have made one of the best decisions of your life. Each person has great strength and potentialities. Each person is put on this earth to harness those strengths and apply them to benefiting themselves and mankind. The life stories of the great men and women of history are usually stories of people who discovered their strengths and utilized them to the fullest degree. 
Churchill was a great statesman and orator. Florence Nightingale was a tremendous organizer. Florence Chadwick was an incredibly strong swimmer. Abraham Lincoln was a far-sighted and compassionate politician and president. Mother Teresa was a truly loving human being with an infinite capacity to care for and support the sick and dying people of Calcutta. Joe Montana was a quarterback with an incredible throwing arm with the Washington Redskins. All around you, you see men and women who have grabbed their major talents. You can do the same if you have the courage to follow your heart.